Hello everyone, and welcome to the Do It Yourself Gourmet. Today, we are going to do a flank steak on the pan, medium, well starting at medium rare, but the carryover cooking will take it to a perfect medium. And to do so, we've marinated it in olive oil, in garlic, and a nice sprig of rosemary. Now you can hear it sizzling, which means it's time to get that steak on the fire. Now luckily we have this pan preheated on a nice high heat because we want it to sear good and hard when we put that meat down. We're going to put the meat down on top of the rosemary sprig to help that rosemary sprig render some of the beef fat that comes off as well as impart the flavor and infuse it right in to that lovely plank steak. Now what we're going to do is let it sear on this side for about two minutes. Now a flank steak cooks pretty quick. You do want to have a little bit of coverage on it so that way it has an even temperature throughout but for these two minutes we're going to keep this fire on high and then after two minutes we're going to flip it over for another two minutes. Put that fire a little bit low, put a lid on it, let it sit for one minute and then bring that fire back up, sear it off and finish it up with a little bit of a deglaze with balsamic vinegar. Now as it's sitting there, we're going to give it a shake, make sure it's good and loose on the pan, nothing sticking on there. Let the fire do its work, keep that flame good and high so that that pan stays nice and hot. Now we're coming up on time, closing in on that two minutes, where we are going to flip it right over and here we go. We'll take it from the slim side, give it a flip and we'll see that rosemary, we'll grab it off and put it right under again. That way we get that lovely flavor on both sides. As you see, that rosemary still got miles to go. So we'll take it, put it right on top, let that sit about another two minutes, put the cover right on top of it, but keep the flame high for that minute and a half to two minutes. And after that, then take it down to a low. Here we are, coming about a minute and a half into that. We're going to let it sizzle just a little bit, but not too much. We don't want any flare-ups of flame. We're going to take the heat down to a medium low for the next minute and a half as we give it just a hair of time to get that middle nice and steamy hot. This is also a time where we've got a little bit of extra garlic. We're going to throw it in there as well and let it steam and saute as that heat is nice and low so that when it finishes up at the end we've got some wonderful caramelized garlic to go right on top of that lovely seared steak. Now do remember cooking times will vary based upon the weight of the steak but this is about three quarters of a pound of steak maybe close to 14 ounces and this is going to take a grand total of about seven or eight minutes with a two minute rest time at the end. got a minute here. It's getting nice and juicy as we can see the returns. It's going to get that moved around. Probably flip it over once more so that the bottom side gets a good sear on it. Now we're going to give that just a moment left. And as we can tell by, now some folks do prefer a temperature gauge a thermometer, but if you poke the middle and give it a spring feel, you can see if it gives back a little bit to you and that gives you a gauge on the doneness if you don't have a thermometer handy or if you prefer not to use one. I'm going to give this a shake around. This is also going to be where we get rid of yonder rosemary. That'll be good for later. Let's turn the heat up. We're going to take out those bits of garlic too. Those will be good towards the end of the carryover cooking, but we don't want to sear the living daylights out of them when we're finishing up the steak. There we go. As the fire is heating up, we got those to the side, ready to go when the steak is finished. Now let's spin that around. Make sure that flame is good and hot. Carry over cooking at the end will help you do a lot of the work too. We are at the point where we are about to throw just a hint of the balsamic vinegar on there. It might flame up a little bit. If that does, 
Just remember, keep it away from anything with an open flame that's going to fire. If you have a microwave above, do move it off to the side as I'm about to do. So you get that on the top there, and as it comes down, there we go. Now you can control that by not letting the flame get too involved with the vinegar. And that'll keep it from flaring up too badly on you. Now as we let that finish and the carryover cooking do its job, we're going to turn off the heat. Still a little bit of redness coming out the side. By the time this is done, that won't be a problem. This one, we're going to leave on the heat, that being not on the fire, but on the heat that's residual below, for about another 45 seconds. Let it finish off, gradient down smoothly, and the carryover cooking will help you get that middle just right. We'll come back when it's time to plate it and slice it up. And now, after giving the beef about three minutes to rest, it is time to slice this loveliness. Now, this loveliness. Now we're going to let it drain off just a tad. That way we don't lose any of the juice into the cutting board. And then we're going to slice this beauty and show you how you can do it yourself and be gourmet. Now we place that there. Get the handy knife, get this set up, and our first slice goes in, and look at that medium to medium rare, just right. Soft juicy steak stays inside until the moment you cut it. There you go folks. Do it yourself gourmet. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.